Life helps you out when you demonstrate appreciation and honor for others. You know, respect is something that people earn in our lives over time, but appreciating others and honoring them is something that we can always do for our neighbors, our family members, our mentors, um, uh, even people that we disagree with, and even people that we might even consider enemies or a threat. Now, it doesn't mean that that we are to be ran over by people. It does not mean that. But life does have a way of helping you out when you don't burn bridges, when you don't act like a jerk, um, when you learn how to uh, look people in the eye, shake their hands, smile, listen to their point of view, and um, kind of walk in that way. Welcome to the Today Counts show. Today does count because it impacts, it influences your tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. The Today Counts podcast is sponsored by the generous donors of the Lead Today community. I'm your host, Kim Piper. I usually set one main goal each year. This year in the year 2023, um, I, I set the goal of writing my second book. Uh, the book has something to do with uh, the power of our stories, the power of the relationships and the people that are integrated in our stories and, and why it matters. I don't have a title yet for it. I'm probably about 80% there. And one of the reasons why I usually only set one major goal is because I have found, at least in, in my experience, that when you set the right goal, uh, you end up accomplishing a lot of goals on the way to, to that big goal. You have to rearrange your life. You have to do things in a certain way. You've got to be disciplined, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I, so as I was working through that, I was reading one of the chapters that uh, I had already written many, many months ago, but I was doing some reading of what I've already written so that I can continue a stream of consciousness. And it was a chapter about my grandfather, who I didn't spend a lot of time with. Um, if my recollection is right, it might have been uh, five years because uh, he lived in Michigan and I lived in California but he came out for those last years in his life. And the impact that he had on my life was absolutely amazing. When I was reading through it yesterday, I actually sensed, felt uh, th that my eyes were welling up. I was, I was tearing up. I started to weep out of gratitude for what my grandfather, the fingerprints that he left uh, on my soul, on my person. And it got me to thinking about, you know, some, some things. Maybe I'm a little strange, but, um, I'm a grandfather now. I've got seven grandkids. Um, my eldest will be 15, uh, next month. And, uh, the youngest is, is four. And, you know, a grandparent typically gets to play a little different role than what a parent does. Uh, a, a parent is, has to be there day in and day out. And, and I know that some grandparents are actually facing that, you know, reality today where they're raising their, their grandkids. Um, we, and that is a blessing and a responsibility. I, I'm sure I can't even imagine, but if I needed to, I would, you know, myself, but my wife and I are blessed that, that we have, uh, two sets of parents that are raising these, these seven kids. And doing a great job at it. So we get to play the role of grandparent. And so to me, it's a mentoring role. It's an encouraging role. It's a role of presence, just like my grandfather's role is in mine. And I, I thought that this podcast might be encouraging to you because as I began to think about mentoring and grandfathering, um, I, I sat down and I wrote out 10 things. I don't know what to call them. I don't know if I want to call them principles or ideas. Um, but, and I could certainly write more than 10. But in, in the time that I had to think through, I wrote down 10 things that I think are important for them to know in, in life 
that if I could give it to them, if I could, if I could radiate these ideas into their, their life, if I could influence them in this way, I think they would be good. But as I was reading them, I thought, you know, these are kind of like evergreen. They're not just for young people. They're, they're for all of us. So I thought I would share them with you and hopefully they will encourage you today. Hopefully, um, not only encourage you, but, but focus you, um, maybe make you appreciate, give you some gratitude, some contentment, or, or maybe it's even a sense that, uh, you need to go back to some of these basics that, that might, might help you. So let's just jump in and get started. First is that life is not fair, but it's filled with many opportunities. Life is not fair, but it's filled with many opportunities. I want my grandchildren to learn as soon as possible that though there's nothing wrong with pursuing fairness and justice, we live in a broken world. And so the reality is not everything is just. It will be made right in its time. I believe that. But it, in spite of the uh, lack of uh, parity and piety and uh, fairness and justice, the world is still full of all kinds of opportunities, if for no other reason to stand countercultural to those kinds of things. So by sharing this principle, uh, what I'm trying to, to say is that we need to look for the opportunities in life to succeed. We need to look for the opportunities to laugh, to enjoy, to appreciate, uh, to achieve, to help, uh, to, to build, uh, to join, you know, these things that, that are good. Um, the second, so the first is life is not fair, but it's filled with opportunities. The second is life can be hard, but that's why winning is so much fun. That's why winning is so much fun. Uh, one of my grandkids, I'll leave her name out of it right now, but she, she hasn't learned that yet. Uh, I think she thinks that she should win in everything that she does. And, and so that harsh reality of, of difficulties, you know, she, she's familiar with them, but she hasn't accepted them yet. And, uh, what I want my grandkids to know is that, that life is hard. So if you push through the hard, if you do hard well, you're going to come out on the other side as a winner. Hard isn't bad. Difficulties is not bad in and of themselves. Uh, hard is good because if we stick with things, we will find that we win. And winning is always, maybe not always, but winning is so much fun. All right. The third principle as a grandfather that I want to share is that life is better. It kind of goes with the second, but, and there are some overlaps in these principles. Life is not fair, but it's filled with opportunities. Life can be hard, but that's why winning is so much fun. You know, it's a sense of accomplishment. And three, life is better dare I say, easier when you do what is hard first instead of what's easy. Do what's hard first. But isn't it so much like, you know, human nature to take the path of least, resi re least resistance? And for those of us who've been around for six decades or more, I think we've learned that when we take on the hard, uh, it, it isn't as difficult as it is when you procrastinate. And sometimes the hard becomes impossible when you procrastinate. So I want the kids to learn that the more they can take on the hard, they can get comfortable with the hard, the easier life will be for them. It's not all about plucking the low hanging fruit, so to speak. You know, so many salespeople um, find success in their first week or month because of relationships or opportunities that have been put in front of them. And they often call those opportunities low hanging fruit. But check back three months later, six months later, certainly six years later and see how they're doing. 
<clears throat> because all of life is not low fring, uh, low hanging fruit that you can pluck and enjoy. So life is better, even easier when you do what's hard first instead of what's easy. Number four, and if I didn't say so, there'll be 10 of these. Number four, life makes you strong when you take responsibility for your mistakes. You know, a lot of us who have grown up, particularly in religious homes or or strict homes or achieving homes, there there is some backlash to that psychology. There's some backlash to that. We we somehow learn to hide our mistakes and hide our failures and and hide the things that we are guilty of or we experience shame for. And what I really want, you know, so so though there are high morals in our family culture, I really want my grandkids to know coming clean on our mistakes is the best way to go. And it makes us strong. You know, uh, there's an analogy that, that I, that I have shared over the years is that when you have skeletons in your closet and you leave them there thinking that they're safe from you and safe from others, actually what's happening in that cold and dark place is that skeleton begins to grow sinew joints. It begins to grow veins and tissue and skin and muscle and it begins to have breath and it finds its way out of that closet and it kind of comes in as out as the grim reaper and and comes to 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 kill and destroy you know when we say that the truth sets us free it really really does <clears throat> so i i want my grandchildren to believe that life makes you strong when you take responsibility for your mistakes. Now, those of us who parent and mentor and coach my grandkids, we play a role in that by, by the way in which we react to their mistakes, of course. If we make their mistakes bigger than they are, and then we reinforce their desire to hide those mistakes, not only from us and the rest of the world, but even from you know themselves. Number five, Life helps you out when you demonstrate appreciation and honor for others. Life helps you out when you demonstrate appreciation and honor for others. You know, respect is something that people earn in our lives over time, but appreciating others and honoring them is something that we can always do for our neighbors, our family members, our mentors, um, uh, even people that we disagree with, and even people that we might even consider enemies or a threat. Now, <clears throat> it doesn't mean that uh, we have to lay that we are to be ran over by people. It does not mean that. But life does have a way of helping you out when you don't burn bridges, when you don't act like a jerk, um, when you learn how to. Uh, look people in the eye, shake their hands, smile, listen to their point of view, and um, kind of walk in that way. So I want my grandkids to learn how to be respectful, even if a person doesn't deserve respect. And they can do that by demonstrating appreciation and honor. Number six. Number six is that life is meaningful when you memorize and follow the Ten Commandments. When you memorize and follow the Ten Commandments. Um, I, I've got the Ten Commandments in, in front of me, and, and just to do a little bit of a review, I thought it would be good um, to, to kind of read them off uh, uh, for you. i got to put on my glasses, though, because I, I, I can't see it real well. The first of the Ten Commandments is you shall not have, you shall have no other gods before me. In other words, there is, there is one God and we are to worship, seek that God and worship that God and not fall into any kind of 
pagan or cultural um, priorities that puts God in a different place in our life other than first. Second commandment says, thou shall not make unto thee any graven images. That might sound, you know, kind of weird. Who, who in this day bows before idols, bows before things and prays to them? Well, the truth is there's thousands. There might even be millions of people who are doing that today. And if you get the innuendo, you understand what I'm saying. The third commandment is thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. We are not to throw the name of God around like any name, but there should be honor and respect for that, that name. Um, and number four, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Take one day out of seven to rest, one day out of seven to remember, one day out of seven to honor, to honor God and the life that he has given us. <clears throat> so the first, the, these, these first four commandments deal with our relationship with God, the vertical relationship. And maybe you didn't know this. So the first four commandments have to do with our vertical relationship with God. The final six, the next six have to do with our relationship with one another. Commandment number five is to honor your father and mother, to honor your father and mother. Number six, thou shalt not kill. Number seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. This means that men and husbands and wives should be faithful to one another. Number eight, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Number nine, thou shalt not bear false witness. This means don't lie and don't tell stories that are untrue about people. Now, if you have never had that happen to you, you know how devastating and damaging that can be. It doesn't surprise me that this has made it into God's top 10. Um, when you, when you tell a lie, you hurt yourself as well as others. And frankly, sooner or later, some people won't respect you or trust you for anything that, that you say. And then the 10th is you shall not covet. In other words, you should not covet anything that belongs to somebody else. Now, this is not a dissertation about the Ten Commandments, but we could do a podcast just going over the Ten Commandments, which is actually a pretty good idea, uh, because a lot of us, we maybe we don't even know the Ten Commandments, and it would be good for us to, to learn them. Okay, so <clears throat> number six was life is meaningful when you memorize and follow the Ten Commandments. Number seven, life will teach you to be a good leader by first becoming a good follower. When, when, when you learn how to get on somebody else's bus that's going somewhere, that's doing something good, and, and you learn how to contribute to that vision and to that mission, when you learn how to cooperate and collaborate, when you learn how to do that, then what generally happens is you learn many principles of leadership and you kind of get nurtured into that soil and you become a good leader. You become a good leader first by becoming a good follower. And I, I want my grandkids to be good teammates. I don't want them to be narcissists. I want them to be people who, who find meaning in whatever they do and not always have to be at the front of the line. Number eight, life teaches you that debt, financial debt, or really any kind of debt has a way of robbing them, robbing you of your future, of your freedom, and your generosity. I, I want my grandkids to learn and to love how to earn, how to achieve, how to tithe, how to give back to the work of God, to the needs of others. I, I want them to, to learn that. I don't want them to live paycheck to paycheck. I want them to learn how to build wealth. 
I want them to learn how to be wise. Um, and when they succumb to consumer debt, I'm not talking about investing debt or partnership debt or business debt, because sometimes leverage um, is a is a powerful thing when we partner with with a bank or we partner with a mortgage company or we partner with other investors. Um, always risk in that, but there's wisdom in that too. But, you know, I'm talking about luxuries, consumer debt. Um, I want my grandkids to know that that kind of debt is a mindset. That kind of debt is decaying and destructive and it robs them of their future their freedom, and the ability to be generous. Debt, consumer debt is disgusting, and I want them to know that. I want them to learn how to save, how to earn, how to invest, um, how to lead. Number nine, life teaches you to love your family. That's how God set it up. And to choose your spouse very carefully. One of the things that, one of the prayers that I pray for all my grandchildren, even though they're all still children, is that I am praying for their spouses now. I'm praying that, that God would lead them to the right person. I'm praying that God would protect them from the wrong person. Um, I'm praying that, that God would woo them to himself. Um, I am already praying for my great grandchildren. I have no guarantees that I'm even going to be on this planet when they make their entrance, but I can still pray for them even though I don't know them. And one of the best ways that we can love our families is to support them, to be patient with them, to be faithful to them, to pray for them. And I want the kids to know that family is central. Now, if you're listening to this and you can't say that is true about your experience and your family, I want you to know that you can start. You can create. You can break the cycle. Um, you, God can use you to bring healing to your family, even if it's in part. So I want my grandkids to know that in life we are to love our family and to choose our spouse carefully. And number 10, and finally, life teaches that delayed gratification is a superpower. I don't know that any of them are there yet, but I would love to see it if they could keep that dollar bill in their pocket versus buy that candy bar. <laughs> I would love to see them be able to do that because if they can do that now, they're going to be able to avoid consumer debt. They're going to be able to uh, uh, reduce their heart rate. They're going to have healthier relationships, healthier finances. Um, they're going to be able to control their tongue. They're going to be able to be self-disciplined and leading themselves. These are the 10 things that came to me when I was thinking about leaving a legacy for my grandkids. Let me conclude just by reading them over one more time. I wonder which one sticks out for you the most. Life is not fair, but it's filled with opportunities. Life can be hard, but that's why winning is so much fun. Life is better, dare I say, even easier when you do what's hard first instead of what's easy. Life makes you strong when you take responsibility for your mistakes. Number five, life helps you out when you demonstrate appreciation and honor for others. Life is meaningful. It is meaningful when you memorize and follow the Ten Commandments. Life will teach you to be a good leader by first becoming a good follower. Life teaches you that debt robs you of your future, freedom, and generosity. Nine. Life teaches you to love your family and choose your spouse carefully. And 10, life teaches that delayed gratification is a super power. A super power. 
If you're not part of the Lead Today community, let me invite you. Go to leadtodaycommunity.com. That's leadtodaycommunity.com and sign up for Monday Moments. It's a weekly email that will encourage your leadership. Again, thank you for joining us today, and thank you for telling a friend about the Today Counts show.